people know there are a lot of uh, denominations taking the blood songs out of their churches. They say uh, it promotes violence. <clears throat> I want to thank the Lord. And I knelt before Him. And I got in that, under that fountain. And the blood of Jesus Christ saved my soul. Cleansed me wider than snow. I want to praise Him for that tonight. Amen. And I'm glad we still sing the songs here that sing about the blood. Blood. Yeah. Yes, yes. How about John chapter 19? John chapter 19. Verse number 30. When Jesus had therefore, or therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. This is one of the seven last sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross. Uh, we could review the others. I would just quickly point them out and their subject head. The first saying was about pardon. Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The second saying was about paradise. He told the thief on the cross, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The third saying is about provision. And he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And said to John, Behold thy mother. And then the fourth saying had to do with pain. You talk about pain. God the Son at the cross who's become human so he could suffer and die for our sins. He says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And there's some kind of, in his humanity, separation from the Father. We call it the, the subject of pain. Then there's par parchedness. John 19, 28, Jesus on the cross said, I thirst. The seventh saying has to do with parting. He says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The sixth saying, which we're looking at here, has to do with perfection. He said, it is finished. And it has to do with completion, accomplishment. That word finish comes from a Latin word, the English word does. Finis, it is placed at the end of books in Latin. It means the end. I think we come to the end of a book and the end. So what do we have here? Something's ending. We have an ending. We have a conclusion. Something's completed. Something is brought to perfection. When he cries at the cross, it is finished. The word was used for final agreements and for settlements of suits. That's why we get the word fine. F-I-N-E. The idea of you pay a sum you sum, a sum is paid at the conclusion of a lawsuit. <laughs> it's finished. Something's been completed. Something's been finalized. Payment's been paid in full at the conclusion of a case. So let me ask the question and try to give us four truths. What is finished? What is finalized? We're told in the passage, it is finished. It, what? What's finished? It is finished. 
Well, let me suggest four possibilities. I thought the it could refer to the fulfillment of Scripture. It is finished. The fulfillment of Scripture. Just a few verses before this 30th verse, in the 28th verse, you'll find the word to telestai, it is finished. You'll find that word there in verse 28. Look at verse 28. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. Those three words are one Greek word, to telestai. Now, were now accomplished. Were now accomplished. And then it goes on to say that the scripture... might be fulfilled. And that might be fulfilled is teleo, it is from tetelestai, the same word. And it, something's fulfilled, something's accomplished, something's finished. What? The fulfillment of predicted scripture. It is finished. So it could refer to that to some degree. Scripture is fulfilled. There are all kinds of promises about Jesus' first coming, isn't there? Hundreds of them. Of Jesus' coming, prophecies, predictions about the woman's seed in Genesis 3.15. As early as Genesis 3, Jesus is coming, the woman's seed. What do we read? Galatians 4. We read about how that he's born of a woman. And the seed comes. Scripture fulfilled. He's to be born a virgin, Isaiah 7, 14. Matthew 1, 18 said that he was born a virgin. Uh, he's to be born in Bethlehem of Judea, Micah 5, 2. And he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. He's to be the seed of Abraham, Genesis 2, 18. And he is and was, Matthew 1 verifies it, to be of the lineage of David, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. And Romans 1, 3 says that he is of that lineage. Uh, he was named before he was born. He's a descendant of the tribe of Judah, Genesis 49.10. Revelation 5.5 5 tells us that Jesus is just that. He is that and much more. And all of these first coming prophecies, predictions of Jesus coming were finished. So, that's a great testimony to us tonight of the accuracy of our Bible and the reliability of Scripture. Before I got saved, one of the things that God did was, was put across my path a book that dealt with Old Testament predictions, predictions fulfilled in the New Testament. Old Testament predictions fulfilled in Jesus' first coming, prim primarily. Jesus, and I said, this has got to be a miracle book. You can't hundreds and hundreds of years beforehand predict something and it come to pass precisely in one person. That's for us even saved. So then I carried around that little green little Gideon's New Testament in my blue jean pocket. Every party I went to, at the end of the day, lots of times I'd get just mully grubs down. Cause why? Because drinking dope don't fix things. And I look at my Bible, look at that little testament that was given to me. And trying, because I knew the answers were there. One night, on a Saturday night, Bob Rousey then gave me the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Laid it out. And the Spirit of God that week wrestled my soul. And then the next Saturday night, I got saved in an outdoor crusade. God did a work. Why? It came with the reliability of Scripture. And I saw this a miracle book of God. The fact that Jesus is who He said He was is seen. The fact that all of the promises yet unfulfilled, talking about His second coming, you can count on that. He's, they'll be fulfilled and accomplished as well. So, it is finished. What? The fulfilling of Scripture in His first coming. Fulfillment of Scripture. What else is finished? I would suggest the finishing of suffering. Jesus suffered greatly. There He is at the cross. 
He suffered immensely. He suffered beyond our even, even our understanding. He didn't only suffer physically. He was beaten, bloody, with the flagellants. He, his back was absolutely torn to pieces. They said of, often that when somebody went through the flagellum, that they would die before they ever got to crucifixion. And often they'd have some kind of organ hanging out maybe or something because the flesh was gone. And that kind of suffering physically. But there was more than just the physical suffering of nails in the hands and the feet. There was also what? Emotional suffering. He suffered emotionally. We're told in Gethsemane, he said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. He said, I am so emotionally crushed. I'm so in my spirit, in my inner person, I am so pressured that it's about to kill me. We don't know what he went through so that you and I could be saved. His sufferings, physical, spiritual. But the good news is, His suffering is complete. He'll suffer no more. It's finished. It's finished. He's not going to another cross. He's already gone and paid the price for our sins. He voluntarily surrendered himself to it because he loved you and because he loved me. He died on the cross for you. He suffered and bled and died for you. But suffering's over for the Son of God. It's finished tonight. It's finished. The fulfillment of scriptures. The finish of suffering. Thirdly, the finish of service. The Lord Jesus volunteered to come and do this work. And we read about it a couple of places. John 5, 36, he says, The works which the Father hath given me to finish. He speaks of them. The works which the Father hath given me to finish. John 17, 4, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. He finished, accomplished what he was sent to do. What he came to do. He did his work. He did it all. He did it well. He paid the price. I would suggest that he's an example to us. And we ought to apply the truth to our own hearts. And ask the question, am I accomplishing what I was sent to do? Am I accomplishing what God has for me to do? Jesus was willing for you. Are you willing for Him? To do what He wants in and through your life. Many a person starts well but finishes poorly. Paul talked about it in Galatians. He said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? We ought to finish well. Paul finished well, didn't he? Same kind of terminology. Listen to what he said at the close of his life, 2 Timothy 4, verse 6 and 7. He says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. And then what's he say? I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. How will you finish tonight? Do you have intentions of finishing? Completing what God called you to do? That ought to be your heart. I want to do the will of God for the rest of my life. 
so that I can meet the Lord with rejoicing, having accomplished His will and purpose for my life. So when he said, it is finished, he said, he's talking about the finish of service. What he came to do in his first coming, he did it all. And completed the task. Having said all of that, the primary meaning, number four, is about the finality of sacrifice. Holy God requires blood sacrifice to atone for sin. We've got offenses, sins and offenses against God. God requires death and Blood sacrifice. He always did. The Old Testament had a multitude of sacrifices. They didn't get the job done. Let me read a passage or two in Hebrews 10. It says, but uh, in, in every priest, verse number 11 in the 10th chapter, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices. Now get this. Which can never take away sin. Day in and day out. Week in, week out. Annually, year in and year out. Sacrifice animals. Sacrifice animals are killed. Blood is spilt. Blood is sprinkled. Blood is taken into the holy of holies before Almighty God, covering paying for sins and God passing over sins for all of those millennia. Right. And then it goes on to say this. But, we're turning the corner here. But this man, the God man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, set down on the right hand of God. Well, who ever heard of a priest sitting down? There's work to do. There's sacrifices to continue. And there never is a sitting point in all of that work. That, that work's never finished. But Jesus sat down. Because why? Why? He had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, and that was completely sufficient payment so that now there's no need for any more sacrifices. There's no other way to get to heaven. That's why Jesus at the cross is saying, it, what? This sacrifice... It is finished, completed, accomplished. The work of the cross is an accomplished work. You know, there are those who, some of the old timers especially, who used to preach that, oh no, yeah, the, what Jesus did at the cross was all good, but it took three more days in hell to pay the rest of the price. Have you ever heard it? Not so. Oh yeah, he had to go to hell for three days and three nights before he resurrected and all that business and continue to suffer. No, so, not so. He paid it all at the cross. And the cross took care of it. 
All of the holy wrath of God for all of your sins and my sins were laid on the Son of God, the wrath of God, whatever judgment it deserved, and he took it all right there. That day. And paid the price. Some say, well, you know, I'm not sure that it paid, that he paid it all. Maybe I have to go to purgatory to help pay for some of my sins. Ridiculous man-made doctrine. It's not Bible at all. You go to some place, go to hell for a while, go to suffering for a while, for however many decades or whatever to pay for, help pay for your sins. You, you don't help pay for sins. You can't help pay for your sins. That's why we have to have a substitute. The perfect sinless substitute. Only He can sufficiently pay what holy God requires. And then some add requirements for salvation. Your works. They add stuff. Like, you know, Jesus plus church membership. Jesus plus baptism. Jesus plus tithing. Jesus plus good deeds. Jesus plus taking the Lord's Supper. Jesus plus this. Jesus plus that. All of those things are good stuff and stuff that you do after you're saved, but you don't ever do them to stay saved or get saved or to help God save you. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, we're to trust Christ and His finished work alone. That's not trusting, we're not trusting anything else. Well, I got Jesus plus baptism. I'm not trusting anything to do with baptism. It was a symbol of what? The death, burial, and resurrection that took place at the cross but, and the death, burial, and resurrection that took place in my heart. It's symbol. It's not salvation. Turn to page number three. Come on, Miss Linda. Page number three. The old song, Jesus paid it all. Oh, listen, let's stand and sing it. Aren't you glad tonight? It is finished. Primarily, the sacrifice that was needed. So God could give me forgiveness, eternal life. So God could give me favor and fully accept me. A sinner. Oh, it's a miracle of grace.
stand in Him complete. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Steve Hall dismisses tonight. Lord, thank you so much. The precious blood that you shed for me. Yes. I want to praise you tonight, Lord, that because of that blood, you bring it me to you. Yes. You washed me white as snow. Yes. I remember that plainly that night. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I want to pray. If anybody here tonight does not know you as their Savior, they've not experienced that cleansing blood that you shed for them. I'm praying, Lord, before they walk out these doors, they get saved. Yes. Don't ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.